Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, as you know, tomorrow we are taking our fraction review test. Today you've been working on skills review, not necessarily word problems, that comes tomorrow, but skills review so that you know how to do these problems. Now, your teacher accidentally emailed the test home to you. It came to your parents. If they really, really, really like you, maybe they would share it with you they and you can work it together. They love me. I'm just I saying. Did, but they didn't give it to you. I did the whole thing I got honey too. So now, what I'm going to do now, as the same thing I did in my first two classes, I'm working one problem off the quiz. One problem off the quiz. Then I'm going to work, I don't know how many problems, off the review. You have all this stuff in your journal. So those of you that were confused, you have these notes in your journal. But let's look at this problem off the quiz first. It reads, and you're following along, Amy cut 32 feet of chain into pieces that were each one-fourth of a foot long. How many of these pieces did Amy have after cutting the chain? Now, on the test, it also says, bubble this in on your answer document. Make sure you put them in the use the correct place value. Well, you've all seen the bubbles. There is no fraction bubbles. So that should tell you using some thinking that this would be a whole number as your answer. You're not going to bubble in tomorrow because you're just doing the test and I have a Scantron. I have to hand grade it. What a beating! But anyway, I have to hand grade it. So, stuff and like that. Well, if we look, we know, know she cut 32 feet of chain. That is what's being cut. Each piece is one fourth of a foot long. That's how big each piece is being cut. And we want to know how many pieces Amy would have once she's done cutting. Well, we know we have 32 as our whole number. Because that's how many feet of chain we have. We're dividing that into sections that are each one-fourth of a foot long. Now this is a unit fraction. Who can tell me what a unit fraction is? Matilda. A fraction with a Good. A unit fraction is a fraction that has one as the numerator. This has one as the numerator. When our division problem has a whole number and a unit fraction, if the whole number is the dividend or first, your answer is going to be a whole number. If the fraction, your unit fraction is first, your answer is going to be a fraction. Now I have 32 holes. So, W-H-O-L-E-S. I could draw 32 feet with this being one foot, this being one foot, and I could draw this 32 times. I could cut it into fourths. Here's one foot cut into fourths, a second foot cut into fourths, but that would be a beating if I had to draw that 32 times. So we use some logic. Noah, we're using logic. We're using thinking. How many, Andrew, how many pieces of chain is Amy going to have in, in one foot? Four. So if one foot has four, two feet has eight, and I could keep going on, the number of feet, feet, times four, because there are four pieces of chain in each foot, 
you'd have 32 times 4, which would be 8, 128. So that is one of your questions that you'll see tomorrow on your test. And only students who have me, obviously, if you're in Bangladesh and you don't have me, then you won't see this on the test tomorrow. Sorry. Come to a good school with a good teacher then. All right, so that's one of the test questions. Let's look at a different test question. I don't know why y'all are recording. It's on the YouTube. I know. It's on the YouTube. I mean, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. Y'all are crazy. Just don't put other people's faces in it because then you'll get in trouble. I love it. 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 Okay, good. Now we're going to look at a subtraction of fractions problem. Because there was a question on how do we add and subtract fra fractions. Well, first of all, we're going to look at the first one. 8 tenths subtract 2 fourths. Brady, you with me? Okay. The problem on the paper is written horizontally when adding and subtracting fractions, you want to write it vertically because it makes it easier to find our common denominator. Matthew, help me out here. Can I subtract these fractions the way they're currently written? Why not, Matthew? Good, because the denominators are not the same. So I need to find first the least common denominator. Matthew, what are my denominators? Four and ten. Four and ten. So what I'm trying to do is find the first multiple they have in common. Now luckily on your test you're going to have access to a multiplication chart because you'll be allowed to use your journal. So you wouldn't even have to write all this out. But because I want to show everybody, I'm going to write it all out. So I'm going to list my multiples. Think multiplication card. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50. Boom! I got it. My least common denominator is 20. I need... Now watch here with me, Jacob. I need each of these fractions to have a denominator of 20, but I can't change the value. I can't just make this 8 twentieths because that's a different problem, or that's a different value than 8 tenths. I mean, if you got 8 out of 10 questions right on a test, Jacob J., what would your grade be? 8 out of 10 questions correct on a test. 80. But if you got 8 out of 20 questions correct on a test, is that going to be the same grade? No. 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 So I can't just move my 8 over. That would be wrong. So I need to multiply this by a fraction that equals 1. Now we also had a question on how to multiply fractions. So if you watch this, this will clear that up as well. First I'm going to look at my denominator. 10 times what equals 20? Two. Two. Since I need my fraction to equal one, it has to have the same numerator as denominator. And then when I multiply fractions, so there are two problems on there where you have to multiply fractions. When you multiply fractions, you go straight across. You with me, Brady? Yes. Eight times two is 16. 10 times two is 20. Multiplying fractions, Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. That's the way it be. That's the way it be. So if, if Jacob took a test with 10 questions and got 8 questions right, Jacob gets an 80. If Heaven took a test that had 20 questions, and she got 16 questions right, she's going to get an 80. They're the same value. 
They're written differently, but they have the same value. So now I need to change two fourths into a fraction that has a denominator of 20, but I can't change the value. Uh, Dylan, if you had an assignment, it had four questions, and you got two of them right, what would your grade be? Hi, Dylan. I'll call you Dylan for the rest of the year if you want me to. But the real, I'm sorry, I'll change it. Dr. Peppers, what would your grade be if you got two out of four questions correct? Dr. Peppers, please say 50. 50! Because a 50% is getting half of the problems right. So if you get half of the four problems right, it's a 50. So my fraction over here, I'm going to do a little thinking here. I need this fraction to equal a half. So what's half of 20? 10. Eight, 10. Yeah. I can check that because four times five is 20. Oh, just Two times five is 10. Well, let's see if you got it right or not. Yay. Now. <laughs> now. Ari, okay. I speak is this addition. an addition or subtraction problem? Um, subtraction. subtraction. I can tell because it has a subtraction sign there. So Ari, what is 16? Now when we subtract, our denominator stays the same. What is 16 subtract 10, Ari? Six. 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 Oh, so how many of you got six twentieths? Raise those hands high. Six twentieths. All right, you're all wrong. You have your hands up. Because you have to simplify it. Okay. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Now, I know you know that you're dividing them both by two. But I just want to make sure that you see why and how you're dividing them by two. You're going to find the greatest common factor. You take your numerator and denominator. And you're going to list your factor pairs. No sleep till. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, what are my factor pairs for six? One times six, two times three. Awesome, thank you. And Isabella, three. what are my factors pairs for 20? Uh, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 2 times 5. <laughs> <laughs> 4 times 5. Okay, good, that's it. So now we have all our factor pairs for both our numerator and denominator. Um, uh, Mariah, what is the biggest one they have in common? Is two. That tells me my greatest common factor is two. So I did it right. When I find my greatest common factor, I divide both my numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor. So Mariah, what is six divided by two? Six divided by two is three. And twenty divided by two. You can go twenty divided by two equals. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Good. No, that would be 2 times 5 equals 10, then 10. That, my friends, is the final answer. Yes, oh, ma'am. Um, you could have also just yeah. said that um, they're both even numbers and know that they're going to divide by 10. We could have looked at it and said they're both even numbers. We could divide by 2. Or you're just smart. You didn't even know to do that. But, okay, someone in my first class had this thought. Someone in my first class had this thought with this problem. They said, well, I know 2 over 4 is a half. So 5 over 10 is a half also. Right? Everybody agrees 5 tenths is a half, equal to a half. So they just changed 2 fourths to 5 tenths, had 8 tenths minus 5 tenths, and got 3 tenths. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Pretty smart. But I'm just saying... All right. Let's take 
One fifth divided by four. All right, so as we've said, when division involves a whole number and a unit fraction, if the unit fraction is first, my answer is going to be a unit fraction. But you have to be able to recognize the picture as well, because you might say which picture represents, or what represents, what equation, expression represents this picture. So you got to be able to recognize that, that as well. In fact, on the test, one of them says that, and we worked that out on, I think we did number six in my last class on the test, so. All right, so if my first number is a fraction, I'm only going to have a whole, one whole. I take that one whole, and I divide it into fifths. <coughs> So I have that divided into five equal pieces. If it doesn't look equal to you, squint your eyes a little bit. And it still probably won't, but, you know, get over it. Okay? So each of these is a fifth. One fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth equals one whole. Now I take that and I divide it into fourths. And I'm looking at just this part. That's why my answer is going to be a unit fraction. I'm going to have this, this is 5, this is 4, that's an array. So I'm talking about one piece out of how many total? One. 20. 20. 20. If I had a classroom full of kids like you, job would be so easy. But I've got some other kids. No, I'm, I'm whispering so that the video didn't hear me. They're just crazy. So I've got to struggle with my job. All right, so let's look. Those high school kids are even worse. Let's look at... You don't believe she is? No, I do. Let's take, we have, we have this problem that has a whole number divided by, a, a whole number divided by a unit fraction. If my whole number is first, if my whole number is my dividend, that tells me my answer is going to be a whole number, not a fraction. Okay. Then you have a picture that looks probably vaguely like mine will. Not exactly, because I'm a horrible... Looks better than you. Oh. Oh. That was... Sorry. That was... Okay. Okay. Oh. Wait, what did you say? That wasn't very nice. So if, if on an assignment, if on an assignment where you're going to have a division problem, if you have more than one hole, like this has four holes, if you have more than one hole, it's obviously going to start with the with the whole number, because this has four holes. I need to take each hole, and I need to divide it into thirds. And then I count up how many thirds do I have. And if I count them, Cade, how many thirds do I have? Um, Twelve. Twelve. So that, my friends, is a few problems off the review. It is one problem off the test. But what you might see, dame cinco, give me five. What you may see is a picture like this, 
and it'll ask you which expression represents this picture. Well, you see you're dividing one hole into thirds. How many holes do you have? You have four. And you're dividing that into thirds. I would advise you to watch the videos from the first two classes. That will help. It will make you smarter -er. Or smarter est. Miss Davis, Miss Davis made our Smartering. <laughs> Boom, Chuckalaka, peace out. God bless. Love you. Do something kind today. Sonic sponsor me. And subscribe.